with a bare hand, found every stone placed in just so for the rain and the cold, but do they call me McGregor the stonewall builder? No. Points out the other window. You see that pier on the lake out there? I built that pier with my bare hands, drove the pileys against the tide in the sand, plank by plank, but do they call me McGregor the pier builder? No. But you fuck one goat. <laughs> Storytelling is joke telling. It's knowing your punchline, your ending, knowing that everything you're saying from the first sentence to the last is leading to a singular goal, and ideally confirming some truth that deepens our understanding of who we are as human beings. We all love stories. We're born for them. Stories affirm who we are. We all want affirmation that our lives have meaning. And nothing does a greater affirmation than when we connect through story. It can cross the barriers of time, past, present, and future, and allow us to experience the similarities between ourselves and to others, real and imagined. The children's television host, Mr. Rogers, always carried in his wallet a quote from a social worker that said, frankly, there isn't anyone you couldn't learn to love once you've heard their story. And the way I like to interpret that is probably the most greatest story commandment, which is make me care. Please, emotionally, intellectually, aesthetically, just make me care. We all know what it's like to not care. You've gone through hundreds of TV channels, just switching after channel after channel, and then suddenly you actually stop on one, to already halfway over, but something's caught you and you're drawn in and you care. That's not by chance, that's by design. So I got me thinking, what if I told you my history of the story, how I was born for it, how I learned along the way this subject matter? And to make it more interesting, we'll start from the ending and we'll go to the beginning. And so if I were gonna give you the ending of this story, it would go something like this. And that's what ultimately led me to speaking to your parents at Kennedy about story. And the most current story lesson that I've had was completing a film I've just done this year, 2012. The film's John Carter. It's based on a book called The Princess of Mars, which is written by Edgar Rice Burroughs. And Edgar Rice Burroughs actually put himself as a character inside this movie. And as the narrator, and he's summoned by his rich uncle John Carter to his mansion with a telegram saying, see me at once. But once he gets there, he's found out that his uncle has mysteriously passed away and been entombed in a mausoleum on his property. One tiny hole, then he opens from the inside. He insisted on a bomb and open coffin of Russian. I don't know why they're going to let you out the door by being my guest. Come, let's go inside. What the scene is doing and in the book is it's fundamentally making a promise. It's making a promise to you that this story will lead somewhere that's worth your time. And that's what all good stories should do at the beginning is they should give you a promise. You could do it an infinite amount of ways. And sometimes it's as simple as once upon a time. These Carter books always had Edgar Rice Burroughs as a narrator in it. And I always thought it was such a fantastic device. It's like a guy inviting you around the campfire or somebody in a bar saying, here, let me tell you a story. It didn't happen to me, it happened to somebody else, but it's going to be worth your time. A well-told promise is like a pebble being pulled back in a slingshot and propels you forward through the story to the end. In 2008, I pushed all the theories that I had on the story at the time to the limits of my understanding on this project. <laughs> Ah. 
Storytelling without dialogue. It's the purest form of cinematic storytelling. It's the most inclusive approach you can take. It confirms something I, I really had a hunch on is that the audience actually wants to work for their meal. They just don't want to know that they're doing that. That's your job as a storyteller is to hide the fact that you're making them work for the meal. We're born problem solvers. We're compelled to deduce and to deduct because that's what we do in real life. It's this well-organized absence of information that draws us in. There's a reason that we're all attracted to an infant or a puppy. It's not just that they're damn cute. It's because they can't completely express what they're thinking, what their intentions are. And it's like a magnet. We can't stop ourselves from wanting to complete the sentence and fill it in. I first started really understanding the storytelling device when I was writing with Bob Peterson on Finding Nemo. And we would call this the unifying theory of two plus two. Make the audience put things together. Don't give them four. Give them two plus two. The elements you provide and the order you place them in is crucial to whether you succeed or fail at engaging the audience. Editors and screenwriters have known this all along. It's the invisible application that holds our attention to the story. I don't mean to make it sound like this is a, an actual exact science. It's not. That's what's so special about stories. They're not a widget. They aren't exact. Stories are inevitable. They're good, but they're not predictable. I took a seminar in this year with an acting teacher named Judith Weston, and I learned a key insight to character. She believed that all well-drawn characters have a spine, and the idea is that the character has an inner motor, a dominant, unconscious goal that they're striving for, an itch that they can't see. She gave a wonderful example of Al Pacino's character, the Godfather, mm -hmm. whose spine was to please his father. And it's something that always drove all his choices. Even after his father died, he was still trying to itch, scratch that itch. I took like to this like a duck to water. Wally's was to find the beauty. Marlin's, the father in Finding Nemo, was to prevent harm. And Woody's was to do what was best for his child. And these spines don't always drive you to make the best choices. Sometimes you can make some horrible choices with them. I'm really blessed to be a parent and watching my children grow. I really firmly believe that you're born with a temperament and you're wired a certain way and you don't have any say about it. And there's no change in it. All you can do is learn to recognize it and own it. And some of us are born with temperaments that are positive, some are negative, but a major threshold is passed when you mature enough to acknowledge what drives you and to take the wheel and steer it. As parents, we're always learning who your children are, they're learning who they are, and you're still learning who you are. So we're all learning all the time. And that's why change is fundamental in story. If things go static, stories die, because life is never static. In 1998, I had finished writing Toy Story and A Bug's Life, and I was completely hooked on screenwriting. So I wanted to become much better at it and learn anything I could. So I researched everything I possibly could. And I finally came across this fantastic quote by a British playwright, William Archer. Drama is anticipation mingled with uncertainty. It's an incredibly insightful information. When you're telling a story, have you constructed anticipation? In the short term, have you maybe want to know what will happen next? But more importantly, have you made me want to know how it will all conclude in the long term? Have you constructed honest conflicts with truth that creates doubt in what the outcome might be? An example would be in Finding Nemo, in the, in the short tension, we were always worried, would Dory's short-term memory make forget whatever she was being told by Marlon? But under that was this global tension of will we ever find Nemo in this huge, vast ocean? In our earliest days at Pixar, before we truly understood the invisible workings of the story, we were simply a group of guys just going on our game, going on our instincts. And it's interesting to see 
how that led us places that were actually pretty good. You got to remember that in this time of year, what was considered a successful animated picture was um, One Mermaid, Beauty and the Beast, The Aladdin, Lion King. So when we pitched Toy Story to Tom Hanks for the first time, he walked in and he said, you don't want me to sing, do you? And I thought that epitomized perfectly what everybody thought it was going to be at the time. But we really wanted to prove it. You could tell stories completely different than animation. So we didn't have any influence then. So we had a little secret list of rules that we kept to ourselves. And they were no songs, no I want moments, no happy village, no love story. And the irony is that in the first year, our story was not working at all. And Disney was panicking. So they privately got advice from a famous lyricist who I won't name. And he faxed them some suggestions. And we got a hold of influence. And the fax said there should be songs. There should be a want song. There should be a happy village song. There should be a love story. And there should be a village. And thank goodness we were just too young, rebellious, and contrarian. At the time, that just gave us more determination to prove that you could build a better story. And a year after that, we did conquer it. And it just went to prove that storytelling has guidelines, not hard fast rules. Another fundamental thing we learned is about liking your main character. And we had naively thought, well, Woody in Toy Story has to become selfless at the end, so you've got to start from someplace to make him selfish, and this is what you get. <laughs> what do you think you're doing? Off the bed. Hey, off the bat, you're going to make this Woody? No. He is. Slanky. Slank. Slank. Slanky. Get up here and do your job. Are you deaf? I said, take care of them. I'm sorry, Woody, but I have to agree with them. I don't think what you did was right. What? Am I hearing correctly? You don't think I was right? Who said your job was to think, Spring Wiener? Well, how do you make a selfish character likable? We realized, well, you can make him kind, generous, funny, considerate, as long as one condition is met for him is that he stays the top toy. And that's what it really is, is that we all live life conditionally. We're all willing to play by the rules and follow things wrong as long as certain conditions are met. After that, all bets are off. Before I had even decided to make storytelling my career, I can now see key things that happened in the years that really sort of opened my eyes to certain things about story. In 1986, I was uh, truly understood the notion of story having the theme. And that was the year that they restored and re-released Lawrence of Arabia. And I saw that thing seven times in one month. I couldn't get enough of it. I could just tell there was a grand design on it. There was, in every shot, every scene, every line, and on the surface, it just seemed to be depicting his historical lineage of, of what went on. Yet there was something more being said. What exactly was it? It wasn't until um, one of my later viewings that the veil was lifted, and it was in a scene where he walked across the Sinai Desert and he's reached the Suez Canal, and then suddenly got it. Who are you? Here were all these seemingly disparate events and dialogues that just were chronologically telling the history of them, but underneath it was a constant, a guideline, a roadmap. Everything Lawrence did in that movie was an attempt for him to figure out where his place was in the world. A strong thing is always running through a well told story. When I was five, I was introduced to possibly the most major ingredient that I feel the story should have, but is rarely invoked. And this is what my mother took me to when I was five.
I walked out of there wide-eyed with wonder. And that's what I think the magic ingredient is, the secret sauce, is can you invoke wonder? Wonder is honest, it's completely innocent, it can't be artificially evoked. For me, there's no greater ability than the gift of another human being giving you that feeling. To hold them still just for a brief moment in their day, to have them surrender to wonder. When it's tapped, the affirmation of being alive it reaches you almost to a cellular level. And when an artist does that to another artist, it's like you're compelled to pass it on. It's like a dormant command that's suddenly activated in you, like a call to Devil's Tower. Do unto others what's been done to you. The best stories infuse wonder. When I was four years old, I had a vivid memory of finding two pinpoint scars on my ankle and asking my dad what they were. And he said, I had a matching pair like that on my head, but I couldn't see them because of my hair. And he explained that when I was born, I was born premature, that I came out much too early, that I wasn't fully baked. I was very, very sick. And when the doctor took a look at this yellow kid with black teeth and went straight at my mom and said, it's not going to live. And I was in the hospital for months, and many blood transfusions later, I lived. And that made me special. I don't know if I really believe that. I don't know if my parents really believe that. But I didn't want to prove them wrong. Whatever I ended up being good at, I would strive more worthy of the second chance I was given. It's okay, Dad is here. Dad's got you. I promise I won't let anything happen to you. And that's the first story lesson I ever learned. Use what you know, draw from it. It doesn't always mean plot or fact. It means capturing the truth from your experiencing, expressing values you personally feel deep down in your core. And that's what ultimately led me to speak into you during TED Talk today. Thank you. Hello. Hello, everybody. Yes, sir. Okay. So, first thing is what we have understood from the guy who spoke on that TED talk. What was the essence of his uh, speak? Anybody can tell? What was the important aspect in his speech? Uh, I guess we can go one by one with people. Let's start with uh, Vivek or Mukesh. Mukesh Jiya or Mukesh Jiya? Or Mukesh Jiya? Mukesh Jiya? Or Mukesh Jiya? Let's start with that. Vivek, you can start. Uh, uh, thank you. Uh, but what happened actually? Uh, is, uh, this was like a different accent uh, uh, English, and then don't understand this kind of English without uh, that uh, written uh, below written thing. It was, was like really out of bond. I was not able to catch the words of this speech without uh, that uh, written thing. It's difficult. To understand them. Okay. Anyone else would like to go? Uh, just unmute yourselves and talk about the video.
Okay, I guess you know, कुछ से बात नहीं कर रहे हैं. I guess I'll have to pick someone then. Uh, uh, मनोज आपने वीडियो देखा तो आप बता सकते हैं मनोज जिस मनोज जी से शुरू करते थे. Yeah, so actually मैंने वीडियो देखा तो है, but चीजें जो हैं उतनी समझ में नहीं आई है. But जहाँ तक मेरे को समझ में आया, he was talking about a uh, structure. of the story and the emotions i mean wa kyunki audio ata ka tak kya raha tha to utna zyada clear nahi hua but kuch kuch points mein mereko jahan samajh mein aaya jahan pe unhone bola ki shayad wo jo toy story hai usko wo bina song ke bina villain ke bina ek happy village ke banana chahte the and then i think then baad mein unhone usme add kiya cheeze after consulting the producer unhone ek song add kiya and all that thing so कुछ खास मेरे को अच्छे से समझ में नहीं आया ये वीडियो <coughs> तो ज़्यादा नहीं बता अच्छा। सकता अच्छा और कोई बता सकता है सौरभ हेलो सौरभ ओंकार उन्होंने स्टोरी को कैसे इंटरेस्टिंग बना सकते हैं एंड व्हाट ऑडियंस लुक फॉर एंड एस इन पॉइंट्स में समझाया एंड वही ऑडियो थोड़ा क्लियर नहीं था इसलिए थोड़ा समझ में भी नहीं आया अच्छा अच्छा आई गेस सर आप वीडियो की लिंक भेज सकते हैं क्या तो लोग बाद में देख लेंगे आई गेस स्क्रीन शेयर पर इतना अच्छे से समझ में नहीं आया किसी So, is it possible? Is this later on will send that? Uh, yes, sure, sir. Now, before we go going to the next things, <coughs> we'll discuss about this video later on. अभी पहले मुझे एक एक चीज़ें समझनी है कि अभी तक जो हमने एक मिनट में फोर वीक्स में जो डिस्कस किया है उसमें जो इम्पोर्टेंट क्वेश्चंस है आपके क्वेरीज है जो कुछ समझ में नहीं आया है ऐसी बातें अगर हम क्लियर करें तो अच्छा रहेगा तो हम आगे फाइनल जो स्क्रीन प्ले फॉर्मेट है उसके बारे में हम डिस्कस कर सकते आई गेस डाउट्स कल डिस्कस किए थे सर हमने बट फिर भी अगर किसी को पूछना हो जो कल मैंने बोला था कि अगर किसी को डाउट्स हो तो प्लीज राइट इट डाउन तो अगर किसी को कुछ पूछना हो तो अभी पूछ सकते हैं फ्लैश बैक and then they show uh, what is happening in the past and then they again uh, switch back to the present in the movie so uh, uh, usual flashback ka feature hai uh, like shot is it only um, a director directorial or um, uh, uh, what is done in production ya yeah, screen play mein bhi likhte samay we can actually uh, write one scene Uh, which is in present and then the next scene for flashback and then screen play mein likh sakte hai kya कि इट इज ओनली फॉर डायरेक्शन एंड एंड प्रोडक्शन डायरेक्टर्स की वी डोंट हैव टू डिस्कस दैट क्योंकि उसका भी स्क्रीन पे ही लिखना पड़ता है ओनली इट्स अ ट्रीटमेंट ऑफ अ डायरेक्टर इट इज डिसाइडेड इन पोस्ट प्रोडक्शन अच्छा दिस टू इज डिसाइडेड इन द प्री पोस्ट प्रोडक्शन इट्स अ डायरेक्टर्स की जैसे बेसिकली डायरेक्टर्स डायरेक्टर के अप्रोच पे डिपेंड करता है हाउ टू स्टोरी कैसे प्रोड्यूस हो ओके एंड शॉट हो ओके एनीवन एल्स हैविंग एनी डाउट आर वी क्लियर इज एवरीवन क्लियर अबाउट द थिंग्स दैट हैव बीन टॉट अंटिल नाउ I guess Rujita had sent me a summary about what has been taught until now on email. I saw that. Uh, I 
i guess sir we can move ahead uh, doubts were cleared yesterday only no so if people had don't have any doubts until now. Okay. yes mukesh mukesh wants to speak i guess yeah actually uh, like whenever we write sir like a script and when people bring it in movie form so like uh, uh, while depicting backgrounds and other things scenes like uh, wherever suppose some event is happening and you told like uh, in pyasa movie they showed like uh, that person is like mother mother is saying regarding vegetables and showing threads so how to conceive those points it's like it's already after writing scripts it's job of others or that for that part also like it is job of like of director or while writing any story script also one can perceive those thing all these things has to be written during the screenplay only okay. as a thing today we are going to discuss ji 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 okay thank you sir इसके अलावा और किसी का कोई प्रश्न है ओके नाउ आई विल हैव अ सर्टेन क्वेश्चन स्पेसिफिक पीपल ओके तो Miss Swati, Miss Swati, let me know the difference between concept and idea. Can you listen? Acha, sir, Swati is Swati is one of the conveners actually. Ah. She is not attending the course. She is not. She is here to help me. Okay, I guess. The next two thing is. Laksha, tell me the same answer to the same question. What is the difference between idea and concept? Hello, Laksha. Can you hear us? Let me write it. Can you send the link of the number and join the group? Laksha is saying his mic is not working. Then concept is. I think you can I, hear us. Idea is not refined. Next, Mr. Malik, tell me what is the difference between idea and concept. Yes, Malik. Idea is idea is any concepts on exist. in the mind as a result of mental understanding awareness or activity uh conception uh, uh you are uh, writing the character you have in it uh, uh we write about him who lives introduction social values mentality and uh, work we write all these there okay mr alan can you tell me what what is the three act structure oh uh, the three act structure uh, refers to a beginning a middle and a conclusion usually in uh, every film we can find a similar three act structure mm -hmm. 
Okay, and uh, then what is the importance of central conflict? And uh, how? The importance of central conflict. So, uh, the uh, central conflict is something that keeps the audience engaged and keeps their attention in. That is the main theme of the plot that makes it interesting. Okay, Ms. Arupuja, now tell me what is the importance of Abhidharana? Uh, Abhidharana is a process uh, 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 during which we move from uh, the idea to the concept, from the Kalpana to the Sankalpana, and uh, it is a thought process of uh, 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 the journey from uh, the rigorous thought process uh, when we move from one stage to other, and it includes um, the influence uh, on our thought process of the social conditionings, or uh, we can say uh, our memories, the past, uh, or even uh, the conditions which we have drawn from our past and also the culture and society and so on. And uh, so many different factors which affect our thought process. So as a result of uh, uh, rigorous thinking, thinking, uh, thinking and meditating on the idea, when it gets refined and defined, well defined and becomes a concrete, uh, uh, con becomes concrete, then uh, after that, uh, after the thought process, it becomes the concept. And uh, additionally, uh, besides this process, we can also say that uh, uh, the characters of our story, what is their abhidharana or what is their thought process or what is their thinking or what is their attitude? That also uh, we can say, uh, uh, about that also we can say, what is their abhidharana? Okay, now let me know, Rupuja. What is the difference when you write a feature film and when you write a documentary film? What can be the difference? When you are thinking for the feature film, fiction, and when you are thinking for the documentary, what is the difference? Is this for me? Uh, the question is for me or general? Uh, for you. Uh, in a feature film, we uh, do need to have a, a story. Um, I mean, um, uh, there have to be characters, and uh, but for a documentary, there, there only has to be a central concept or a, a area of um, concern which you are talking about. But uh, in um, a feature film, there actually has to be a story and uh, the beginning and then the conclusion of the story. Whereas in documentary, it's a uh, uh, area of concern which we are talking about. And uh, uh, the three acts uh, uh, are not exactly, um, I mean, this uh, narration may not be in the form of the three acts, uh, the way we are using the way we are uh, having for a story. So there may be a, a beginning and conclusion, but uh, still uh, it may not be in the same format. Um, it's more of a narration form than where um, uh, there are no, there may not be dialogues in that. Whereas, um, um, and the scenes also, uh, there may not be exactly scenes, but topics may be handled and talked about, but scenes may not be there, like a feature film, like a movie or feature film. Uh, okay. Who else will talk on this subject? Ellen wanted to talk, I guess. So a feature, feature film is more dramatized uh, than a documented film. Both of them have three... Well, usually documentaries do follow the triad structure and they have dialogues. Uh, it's just feature films are more dramatized. Also, uh, documentaries take shots of real lives, uh, whereas in feature films, most of the shots are enacted by actors. Okay. 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 
Actually, already he took one that one point which I wanted to say, like uh, documentary oftenly related to reality, whereas like feature film always intend to like entertainment or fiction. Another point is also in documentary we uh, we keep generally like some uh, realistic uh, happenings which it's like recorded in past by media or oneself or uh, like. Uh, any people who, who is involved in that uh, event or location, whereas uh, this is not in like feature film and uh, mostly feature film of, of longer duration. If you will see from India, Indian perspective, Indian Bollywood, generally it's nearly minimum to <clears throat> two and a half hours to three hours, whereas documentary often like they will make like 30 minute, 40 minute, or maximum one hour or one and a half hour. Like it's like short film. Hmm. Okay. So not necessarily documentary can be a short film. It can be just documentary. Yes, yes, sir. It will be like series of event also. Like, yes, yes. Generally. Okay, now tell me. It's a, it's a general question. Now, what should be the vision of the writer or the author of a story, screenplay, and a novel? Do you understand my question? Can you repeat again, sir? Like, so, what are the things? elements of the author. Sir, like it, it depend on writer itself. Like if he is a fiction writer, so obviously if he is bringing a movie, so he, he should bring very good fiction. Uh, like that may be related to like future happenings, or if suppose if anyone like is uh, related to uh, like he is writing in technological field or uh, or sahit. So he should try to bring like to bring out the what is happening in society to bring the paradigm shift in society he should think like from that angle at least he should be in realistic with what is happening in current point uh, current uh, uh, like uh, in society and he should be very thoughtful to go at finer levels at uh, like <clears throat> we say like uh, grain analysis or in software analysis software system so like he should see each and every final point to bring out as a like holistic approach with reduction and deduction both approach you should think. Who can answer the same, same question? Uh, sir, uh, may I speak? Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, we pick. Yes, sir. According to me, sir, uh, I idealize writer, uh, I idealize writer as a like uh, uh, Goswami Tulsidar. Why? Uh, because 600 years ago, there used to be a lot of conflicts between a Vaishnav and Savism uh, people who follow Vaishnavism and Savism. Then suddenly uh, this uh, Tulsi, this came, Tulsi Das came and write and they com uh, he compiled the relationship between Vishnu, Rama and Shiva in such a way that Rama is worshipping Shiva, Shiva is like getting happy, uh, worshiping Rama, he is meditating on, on the name of Rama. And suddenly, after reading these people, just forget the conflict between Seva and Vaishnavism. So, uh, for a writer, it should be like to uh, integrate wherever you are living, you should uh, project your thoughts, your creativity, or your imagination, or whatever you have, in such a way that you can. Uh, integrate more and more people you can uh, you can uh, break the differences between people on thought process on uh, ideological level if you are able to do so i think uh, it's a great writing 
Okay. okay, sir. Uh, I believe a writer should focus on uh, the plot, the characters, and the conflicts that arise. So, I believe these writers should focus on these things. Well, uh, see, a lot of important things we have discussed during last one month. Okay. So in these things, I know that uh, whatever things I have experienced more than enough to start your writing as a writer. Because most of the things are based on your idea and it's about the concept and how finally you are going to uh, uh, portray this concept into the proper sequence of the storyline. So this story, the storyline, now it's a skill of an author, it's a skill of an entertainer, it's a skill of a, a, a grammar, it's a skill of your creative. So ultimately see, so creation is what, so, so, so creation is a creation of a Brahman. Brahmana is a what, it's an ultimate of mind. It's a small mind, it's a big mind, which has an autonomous system. It has a, 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 a one, one, one central center of that particular universe. And that center of universe is your protagonist and the antagonist and what happens around that particular mindset. So these sets of the minds of a protagonist and antagonist Ultimately, it holds the mind of your audience. So once you, 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 you get a hold on the mind of audience, then automatically they will follow your characters. They will follow your storyline. So, uh, Last week and yesterday, we have spoken about a storyline or that is called a structure. Is there any confusion or a conflict in understanding of a structure still? Is it okay? Sir, one section like antagonist and protagonist, you explain that section I could not understand, sir, like in proper way. Like as a writer, how, how to uh, like bring both in our uh, like uh, in a story, sir, like in such, as a central theme. Yeah, when, have you, uh, when we discussed the castle, you were in that lecture? Yes, sir. Also, in that thing, I have explained that what is the role of protagonist. Uh, that I understand, sir, that meaning. But while as an author, when we are writing, so like uh, according to context, sir, different context, suppose uh, if it is fiction or when we are bringing one reality and if I want to try to portray someone, as a like antagonist. So how to bring so that in my script or writing that in society there not be like that much uh, conflict? No, there is a lot of conflict in society. You you find any news channel, you find any newspaper, it's a, it's a full of a conflicts. And even I told you to write that assignment the person who is a good person and who is a bad person. Aapne kiya tha, attempt kiya tha, assignment? This Father, is... I am trying, like I will submit. I, I did not wrote completely. I did not write completely, but I am in processor. Okay, so once you will start the practice, practicing, then you will automatically able to understand. Okay, sir. Okay, structure. Structure ke baare mein kaya rahe te. So is that clear? Till the structure? Yes. Abhi bhi kis Sleep. Okay. 
Okay. Is there any still still any questions regarding whatever things we have discussed? Mostly people had asked their doubts, I guess. Of the, you can move ahead. How we will be talking about the screenplay? Okay. It means. अभी तक जो हम समझने की कोशिश कर रहे थे ऑल दैट थिंग वॉज एज अ कंटेंट क्रिएटर इट वॉज एज अ राइटर और ऑथर दैट हाउ टू क्रिएट अ कंटेंट हाउ इन अकेडेमिक फॉर्मेट ऑफ अ स्टोरी टेलिंग और द क्रिएशन ऑफ अ एंटरटेनमेंट एंड क्रिएशन ऑफ अ डॉक्यूमेंटेशन and for that we have understood that there must be a strong idea there there must be a strong concept there must be a strong storyline and there must be a effective three act structure now it's up to you when i told you about a concept editing and yesterday i told you to edit the ramayana mahabharat and india's freedom struggle into the ten scenes so it means you need to understand that which are the most valuable points in that story line or in that events the, the chronology of that events and once you know that a particular story you need to create into a particular numbers of the scenes so numbers of a scenes become your a structure so if your story has a 20 scenes it means how many lines will be there in your story line kitne lines hogi kitne lines mein aapki story line hogi कितने लाइन्स की एज इन प्लीज एक्सप्लेन द्वेश्चन अट Sir, what do you have? There will be twenty lines. The simple answer. If there are twenty scenes, then there must be twenty lines in your structure. Do you understand? Yes. Chronologically, one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, twenty. अगर hundred है तो hundred. It's a very simple formula. So once you know your story, कि जैसे कल yesterday yesterday Rukuja explained her structure ना, her act one, act two, act three. So there were forty eight points. Forty-eight lines in her a structure. Now it's a individual's decision. It's a creative decision that how many uh, scenes should be there in their story or a structure or in their uh, uh, entire script. Now we'll try to understand the difference between a screenplay and a. Story and what is a script? So story is what story is either narrative, like uh, somebody narrates a story orally, or you read a story in a newspaper, or a magazine, or a novel, 
or a textbook or you listen a story in a radio or you watch a film in cinema hall or television or mobile phone or internet so in this process once once you know that what is the job of a author so author is that person who writes a story regardless and the property of the author writer is vocabulary and strong grammar and the literary values in his or her writing so all these things are applicable for the uh, uh, story <clears throat> just but if 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 you are writing for the cinema so simply whatever things you have written cannot be converted into the cinema okay but as a author what you, what is your skill is you need to create a content with a academic standards as per the uh, rules of literature as per the uh, rules of language and once you have created a story then you need to convert that story into the specific format so this specific format is what either if you are converting into the novel then it must be a, a something look like a novel then if you want to convert it into the drama then the write up of that uh, formatting of that uh, story should be in the form of a drama or a play and if you are making a film then it should be formatted into the screen play so keep in mind that writing a screen play and writing a story is a totally different form you directly cannot start writing a screen play unless you don't have any story or a strong content in your hand and why indian cinema is flop because either they are working just only on the stories or directly they are trying to write a screen play without creation of the story so either you what you need to uh, create a, a script or a screen play is a secondary part it's a intermediate job the primary job is to create a story and on the paper you have to written the whole stuff so your story can be 100 pages 200 pages 1000 pages or 50 pages or whatever it's up to your capacity and up to your dedication and up to your uh, understanding and once you have got a a, a story or uh, uh, you can say you will have a, a, a novel or a story like these things now i'm showing you one a story now this is a story one of our student uh, she has written this uh, 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 novel and this was like a classroom work jaise maine aapko jo homework diya hai so like that she has written a story and from that story now her job is to convert it into the screen play so first thing is what you should have a written manuscript manuscript of your story in your hand so written manuscript is what whatever way you can write a story whatever way you can uh, uh, express yourself you need to express on paper and it's a regardless then there can be a first draft second draft third draft fourth draft unless you are not satisfied you can rewrite your drafts 
and once you have been con convinced for yourself then you will have to find out the cinematic material from that structure from that writings now we'll try to understand what is the meaning of the cinematic material now the video which we uh, 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 we, we have seen in the beginning and that gentleman was talking about the emotions and that language of a visual language so what he was trying to tell that there is no need of a dialogues so you can see the visual experience you have seen one deer what one deer was a handicap and it was not moving and it was a fridge in the uh, uh, that eyes and what little mickey mouse comes and that that mm -hmm. oh so with its action it shows that you have to be a very happy so there were no words there were no words and through that words that visuals you can understand the story so try to understand cinema is basically it's a विजुअल मीडिया सो विजुअल मीडिया का मतलब क्या है यू विल हैव टू क्रिएट अ सम एक्सपीरियंस ऑन द स्क्रीन एंड दैट्स अ स्ट्रॉन्ग कंटेंट ऑफ योर स्टोरी विजुअल स्टोरी दैट्स अ सिनेमा दैट्स वाई आई सी देर आर थाउजेंड्स ऑफ स्टोरीज इन महाभारत और रामायण बट why the selected stories are uh, people are always trying to portray because in these stories there is some visual elements visual experience jaise wo swayam var hai ya vastra har hai varan hai aran hai ya that is a war war hai ya kai sare jo ya radha krishna ka romance hai all these things are a visual experience तो लोग देखो द थिंग्स मोर यू स्पीक इज नॉट बिलीवेबल बट द थिंग्स विच यू शो इज मच मच बिलीवेबल फॉर द कॉमन मैन एंड दैट्स वाई इन द स्टोरी टेलिंग इन ऑन इन द स्क्रीन इन द स्क्रीन प्ले यू नीड टू फाइंड आउट द मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट विजुअल एक्सपीरियंस इन विच some activity is there rather than the dialogues so once you try to find a uh, 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 chronology or the cinematic material then you have to edit that material and you have to make the structure from that material you understand so once you know that what is your structure means how many visual incidences or events are there in your story then accordingly you can fix your story into the particular format now see when we use a screenplay and when 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 we use the word a script so what is the difference between a script and a screenplay it's a very it should be very very clear that script is a very common word for any kind of a programming or any kind of a details of the event which is a documented event or which is a de program design of your event or it's a planning of your event or it's a planning of your action so script can be for the street play a script can be for a radio play script can stand for the street theater play for cinema documentary everywhere the word script means the written thing the scripted means programmed programming kiske piche kya hone wala the chronology of events 
the plan of actions is a script and when we see a literary word of the script it means it's a lippy jaise devnagari hai roman hai tamil hai marathi hai ya arabic hai so literal literary meaning of the script is a lippy and in the vague form for the cinema and for other things people uses that the script is a written form but when we specifically talks about a screenplay it means the screenplay means written for the cinema so whatever things play whatever drama plays on the screen so the programming of that play is audio and visual so you you create a de detailings about what do you see on the screen and what do you listen or what do you hear from the screen so these two factors you have you will have to write into your scene so when we say what is the definition of the scene now who will tell what is the definition of the scene tell me somebody well, i guess yesterday we discussed about this so i guess anyone can answer what is the definition of scene uh maybe someone who doesn't really talk uh, let's say uh, umkar can you can you tell us what is the definition of scene a uh, scene is something like uh, whatever is we are seeing in front of is a uh, scene and uh, and if there is some action a small action is happening uh, that can be done with a song aur koi batayega tell me in the proper words ha Uh, sir want the thoda definition words definition ke words jo kal discuss hua tha so sir we can say scene is like a part of a script and uh, it is subsection of an act okay ruchu ja bola tu When action yes, is happening, uh, when action is happening at a given place and time, uh, but it may be with or without characters. So, we took the example of the river, and uh, we discussed that. So, the dam and the river. So, well, it means an activity that occurs at one particular time and. at one particular place okay so if you know what is your scene na abhi kisi ne pucha tha ki mukesh ne pucha tha ki do you need to write all the details ki wo sabji le rahi hai ya aur kya kar rahi hai ye kya hai wo writer ka pura sawal hai ya director ka aise kisne pucha tha Somebody asked the question. I guess Mukesh. I was asking. Mukesh ji ne pucha. I asked. Yes. So once you know what is your scene, it means all the details in your scenes you will have to write in a description. Okay. So now what we will try to understand that once you know that. शेयर स्क्रीन आएगा संस्कार यस सर शेयर स्क्रीन यस सर सो लेट मी शो यू इज इट विजिबल नहीं सर इट इज नॉट विजिबल येट
Hello. Yes. Ha, ah, it is visible now. See. Now, if you are going to, what you can say, write a screenplay, just a moment. Eh? Okay, so you can see. Okay, can you see this thing? Hello? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, once you start writing the screenplay, first you will know what is the chronology of your scenes. So once you know what is your scene, then after that you will have to write. Uh, you will have to write the screenplay. Or screenplay, jo hai, that that you will have to write in a step by step. So step by step is what? Once you know what is your scene and when you are going to write a screenplay, it means you will have to write in a specific layout, in a specific format. And that is called industrial layout of a screenplay. So this is an industrial layout. Okay. So when you see view, location and light, मतलब for example uh, ये आगे पीछे हो सकता है if it is a river okay if it's a river uh, is it visible संस्कार yes sir yes sir it's visible Montage. Okay. Okay. So now, for example, its a location is a river. Okay. This is a river, river bank or river ghat. We'll see. Okay. So, is it exterior or interior? है? River is what? Exterior or interior? Exterior. So you will write exterior. Okay. In short, it is written as a exterior. Okay. Now, is it a day or night? Uh, it will depend. Huh? पानी भरने के लिए कुछ एक एक राधा गई है वहाँ पर नदी में ना और कृष्ण वहाँ पर पेड़ अच्छा तो डे हाँ तो डे ना so it is called a day okay now ये क्यों लिखना है day or night why do you want to write a day or night see Try to understand when you are writing as a, 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 a screenplay. So the screenplay means to write the industrial instructions for all your existing uh, technical team of your production, like cameraman, art director, editor, and uh, 
actors all these people will need some instructions okay so river ghat is a location okay so this is a location and once your cameraman will know your production manager will know when they will have a schedule so they will know that oh if you we have a script so there is a location of a river there is a location of a apartment there is a location of a school so they will have a industrial uh, production de uh, details and for that thing they need to understand who what is a the location then cinematographer will decide if it is a day or if it is a night then accordingly he or she will have to use the cinematic material like camera equipment lighting or whatever so exterior ka lighting alag hota hai and interior ka lighting alag hota hai so that's why you have to write the exterior or interior rat night ka if it's a difference between lighting of a night as well as the lighting of a day so that's why this is a instruction for your cinematographer that what is the what kind of a lighting is there okay so if this is a location so this is also called a scene heading this is also called a scene heading okay so when you actually start writing what you will write river exterior and day okay and after that you will have to write the narration or the description yes sir हेलो सर हाँ यस कैन यू सी द पीडीएफ विजिबल है आई मीन दैट सेम पीडीएफ मोंटेज द वॉल्केनो इरप्स आयर्स एंड फायर इनटू द स्काई अच्छा ये मैं जो आई जो मैं टाइप कर रहा हूँ नहीं दिख रहा हेलो I guess somebody else can comment on it. मेरे लिए freeze है I guess screen. मेरे लिए screen freeze हो चुका है. PDF ही देख रहा है. अच्छा सिर्फ PDF देख रहा है. Yeah, it is freeze. PDF ही देख रहा है sir. Now is it visible? अभी दिख रहा है sir. Yes, sir. अभी दिख रहा है. ओके हाँ मैंने ये सब एक्सप्लेन किया है कि लोकेशन सीन हेडिंग दैट इज रिवर एक्सटेरियर ये सब याद है मैंने जो अभी डिस्कस किया था ओके सो इट्स अ रिवर एक्सटेरियर डे ओके सो व्हेन यू विल राइट अ डिस्क्रिप्शन इन दिस डिस्क्रिप्शन यू विल राइट इट्स एन अर्ली मॉर्निंग लॉट ऑफ पीपल आर Uh, 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 there at river bank fetching water. Okay. So, is me? Am I? What is visible? What is visible? 
ओके एंड वन पर्सन इज वॉशिंग इट्स काउ इन द वॉटर सम children are enjoying swimming now you can see okay, what we have written it's a early morning lot of people are there at river bank fetching water one person is washing uh his cow in the water and some children are enjoying swimming to isme kya likha hai humne who can explain the scene can anybody explain this scene yes ha saman please hello 